Well, hello there. This is going to be a walkthrough to show you how to make these compact dimmers. Let's go ahead and get started and show you what you're going to need. We have our dimmer, one gang box, also known as a handy box, wall plate, 16-3 wire, box cutter, screwdriver with a Phillips, wire cutter, tin snips, although these are somewhat optional. They just make your life easier. Two drill bits, 5 16th and 7 32nd, scissors, and drill. Also, I am not a smart person and I forgot to include the ends here, uh, which of course you're going to need, which are going to go on the ends of your wire. Uh, you're going to need a male and female end. And again, these are gonna be linked to in the bottom of the video. Let's go ahead and get started on our build. So the first thing we're going to do is take this one gang box here. Um, you'll notice there are little indents here. We can actually pop these out if you're going to run wires through. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is actually drill using my drill bits to be able to slip this wire through. So let's go ahead and get our drill here. Let's start with the smaller drill bit first so we can actually do a pilot hole and drill, do it at an angle so you can see, drill straight through. Okay, that gives us a good pilot. And again, just for reference, this is going to be a 5 16th drill bit. This is going to line up with our 16 3 wire. Go in your pilot hole. Make that a little wider. And kind of what I learned is you want to go slightly larger than the 16th drill bit. So kind of bevel out the edge just slightly. The reason for that is you want to be able to easily slide in the wire from the inside. Okay, feels pretty good. Okay, so we have our hole. This is going to be the top of the dimmer. Next, you'll see these two little indents. These are for running wires in the bottom of the game box. Uh, we don't wanna break this tab completely off. Uh, we want just enough to where you can actually insert something to hold this tab up while you put your wire in. So we're gonna take a screwdriver here, kinda go, you'll see that little notch right there, and then pop this in. You heard it snap there, but you don't wanna break it all the way off. Nifty little trick I found is to take your scissors, keep them closed, go in one edge here, and then slide them all the way in here. So what that does is it actually holds up your tab so you can slide your wire in and out while you're working on your dimmer. Okay, so I'm gonna use this previous dimmer that I made as a reference here for the length of wire. So you'll see that if I go from end to end here, you're looking at about around a foot. Uh, you can make this whatever length you want. Uh, I tend to keep them a little bit shorter so that way these are a little lighter and more compact. So what we're gonna do is slide in the end here that you have propped up, go all the way up. And then I'm gonna use my previous one as a guide. Again, this is ancillary. You can do whatever length you want. And let's say about there. Okay. So we're gonna call that good for our end, for our length. Let's go give a little bit of leeway here. Now what we're gonna need to do now is actually access the wires that are going to be on the inside of the box that we're going to wire up to our, our dimmer switch. So what I'm gonna do, and you need to be very careful on this step, is I'm gonna use a box cutter and then I'm going to just do a line around the outside and I'm gonna pull that off so I can access the wires. I'm gonna kind of mark right where I need here. Again, this is why I'm keeping this propped open. I'm gonna grab the center here, pull that through the switch. And I know this is kind of my mark. So using my box cutter here, I'm going to score and just do, you don't wanna to go too deep here because you don't wanna cut the internal wires. You wanna just score the rubber so you can actually pull it back. Pull that apart, okay? Now you don't wanna pull the sheath all the way off because we actually wanna keep this for the top light of our dimmer, but you need to pull it back enough where you can actually have some room to work with your wires here. So I go about generally three, three and a half inches. 
And the wires that we are concerned with right now are the green, which is your ground, and the black, which is going to be your hot or live wire. There's our wires. And again, this is going to go back on the inside and feed through that hole that we drilled. Let's take our tin snips, let's cut the ground. Actually, let's give a little more leeway here. Okay, let's cut the ground, cut the black. And now we need to strip the ends off here so we can get to our bare wire. Let's take our uh, wire strippers here. And again, this is 16th, so you can use 14 or 16 to actually strip it, but you wanna get at least a good half inch if you can. So let's go about here. The reason for this is that you're going to be putting them in your wire caps here. Another good tip is to clockwise turn your wire tips here so the wires don't fray out. Okay, so we have a pretty good lead on each of these wires now. Let's take a look at our switch. Now, these dimmers are made for either what are called single pull or three-way. Single is just an on-off. Three-way is if you have two switches. Uh, we're not going to be concerned with three-way, so in case I wanna use these dimmers for something else later on, I'm going to leave the, the uh, three-pull wire, which is right here, this red and white. In the package, you'll see that you come with, comes with two screws, four yellow caps, and a blue cap. The blue cap is if you're not using three-pull, put the blue cap, screw it on the red and white wire. You have a spare yellow cap that you don't need, so I'm gonna set that aside. So our rocker here, if we look at our pilot hole, which is gonna be on the top, I want the rocker to be at the bottom of the dimmer switch. So I'm gonna lay it right here. And the first one I'm going to do is going to be the hot or live wire. So basically you split the black wire and then you have a red and a black on the back of your dimmer. One is going to go to each black wire. Now, if you've never used a wire cap before, they're extremely simple. There's basically just a tiny little screw here. The wire goes in, you tighten it clockwise, tightens on the wire. Uh, it's much better than just going wire to wire and then electrical taping over the top of it. These are much safer. So let's connect our, let's actually, I'm going to trim. These leads are pretty long, so I'm gonna cut them in half lengthwise for each of them. Okay, let's go ahead and connect our black to our black. And I like to actually twist the wire around the end here and then keep each wire parallel so it comes to a point. And then screw on your cap here until it starts twisting the wires around each other. That way you know it's on there tight. Give each wire a tug, make sure it's not gonna pop out and be loose. Let's take our red wire now, go to the other black, do the same process, twist your ends of your wire, twist it around the red wire here, make sure they're parallel, take your wire cap, tighten it right on there. Great. Now this last one might be a little tricky. Uh, so basically what you need is to take the ground wire of the switch, which is right here, and each of these wires, which are from your main wire for the dimmer, and combine them all together uh, because you do want this dimmer grounded just for safety. Also keep in mind, all of this needs to be shoved in the bottom of here. You don't want you know, a short to happen, so you need to be mindful of where you're gonna be putting your wires, which way is so right now I'm gonna stack the red over the top of the ground so that way when you go into the box, you're gonna have a little more leeway of where the wires are going to go. I found the easiest way to do this part is to line up your wires here, do one first. So I'm gonna take the wire, twist it around. Keep your wires parallel at the base here. Take your other wire and do the same thing. Get it up to the base, twist it so you have a nice 
peak there. And then cap everything together. Tighten it down until the wires start turning. There you go, so everything's nice and tight. So that's it, That our wiring is done now. Uh, we've capped off our three pull wire. We've taken our hot wire and our ground, split them. We've grounded to the switch, to the dimmer, and we split our hot black live wire and wired our red and black from the dimmer to each end of the black wire that we split. And that's pretty much it for this dimmer. It's real simple. Um, so the reason I kept the scissor in here is so I can now pull this back down without fighting against the interior tab. It's gonna be pretty easy to get down in here and then feed it through the top here. So let's get down here, feed that through. Okay, there you go. And what you end up with, all your wiring is going to be in the center. You've got a nice clean out. And at the top, since we drilled that through versus punching it out, we've got a nice exit for our wire. Now this is gonna be, since this is so compact, you need to be a little, little mindful of where you uh, put the wire caps in the bottom here. So what I've found is if you can kind of see here, I usually try to put two uh, vertically on this side and then I'll shove the other one kind of here on the back because if you kind of take note of the shape of the back of the dimmer, uh, you think you have a little bit of spare room at each end of the dimmer. So I'm gonna pull this up until we're just about done, but you still want the rubber to be coming through there. Let's put this on that side. Gotta reach in and actually put this vertical to the other side. So if you can see that, I've got two vertical on the left, one on the right, and then the three pull wire, I'm going to loop around and put in the bottom. Okay. And there you go. It'll take a little bit of force to get everything done in there since the wires need to be bent down, but that's it. Let's get our uh, screwdriver here, the two screws that came with the switch. Go ahead and screw these into the top of the switch. Okay, and we're just about screwed in here. There are two holes here. These are for the wall plate that you'll want to be mindful of. There are channels that the screws are going to go in right there and right there. So you want to make sure as you tighten these uh, switch screws down that you keep these aligned with the channel. Great. All right, and now our dimmer is completely wired up. We can go ahead and take the scissors out, slide that out so that way the tab you'll see in the bottom here uh, rest back down on the wire so that way if you do have this also hanging it actually acts as its own catch so that way it's not pulling on your interior wiring uh, which is fantastic and same for the top here where the wires are split this splits out um, each wire cap so you actually if you even do have this hanging it's not going to go anywhere so for our top here since we pulled this rubber sheath back a little bit uh, kind of feel and find where your end of your wires are so Looks like we're right here. Go ahead and cut that. Those are three wires. And then you can see we're pretty close to the length of a previous. Again, this is whatever length you want it to be. Let's go to the end here. Trim the bottom off. Okay. And from here, we need to remove the uh, outer protecting wire here, the rubber part, and strip each end. And then we're going to wire that into uh, our male and female plugs here. And what you can do is, our female's going to go on the top. Take your screw out of your end here. Open this up. So take note of when you're gonna be affixing the wire to this that this is going to retract a little bit. So the end goal here is to be able to have this on the inside of the plug and still have the rubber outer protectant layer on there. So that way you don't have exposed wires, which can also be um, worn with stress and just bending improperly there. 
just a little more protecting. Let's go ahead and undo these. In a plug end like this, the silver screw is going to be your neutral. Green is going to be your ground. And then uh, bronze or brass is going to be your hot or live wire, which will be black, white, green. Go ahead and undo those all the way. So let's keep in mind that our wires are gonna stick up here about there and then kind of mark roughly where you're gonna remove the uh, outer coating here. So about there, score on the outside. All the way around, again, not too much pressure. You don't wanna cut those inner wires. Just enough to get through that outer coating. Pull this off. If you have any paper in here, that's just from when they constructed the wires. Go ahead and remove that. We've got our ends here. Again, let's take our wire strippers. Get a good uh, half inch at least of a lead on them. Okay. Twist your ends here just to make the wires easier to work with. Now this is just a little thing, but something to keep in mind. Uh, so what I did with all my previous switches that I've made, I like when it's resting down, if you set it on the bottom, that the ground is going to be on the bottom and you can see the plug rest nicely. Same with the male end, um, the ground is on the bottom. It just makes it easier to plug in. Um, so to make it do that easily, you wanna keep in mind where your wires are. Ground is going to be on bottom, black on the left side on this, and white on the right side. Turn our wires here. So green, ground is on the bottom, black is on left, white is on right. Little handy tip on these screws, you wanna put the wire underneath the screw and you're going to tighten the screw down on top of it. You want the wire to go underneath these screws and actually go with the direction that you're tightening the screw. So on the bottom here, we're actually gonna give this a little hook. So when we go on the screw, put it into the channel here. And if you can see that, as you tighten down, the screw is actually going to kind of pull the wire along with it. So you just have a better connection with more wire. There we go. And repeat the same process for the black and white wire. So there we go. Our female end is wired up. Keep in mind there is a screw of when you close this that you don't want to screw through your wire. So channel two of them to one side of the screw hole here. If you can see that. And channel one to the other. You'll see that our uh, outer protective coating is going to be going just to the inside of the end, which is exactly what we want. Make sure you're not gonna pinch any wires. Close it up here. Apply a good, good bit of pressure on the end here and tighten up the screw. One end is wired up. And you'll see when the switch is laying on the back, ground is towards the bottom. It just makes the plug lay there nicely, easy to plug in. Let's go ahead and do the other end. Take your screw out of your male end here. Open it up, again you'll see uh, it's a little recessed so you'll need to figure out where you want to score this to be able to pull the rubber outer wire off and still have it set within the little nook here. Take note that this is actually reversed from the female end. So our ground is still on the bottom, but the hot live wire is now on the right and the neutral wire is now on the left. Go ahead and unscrew all these. Again, I want the ground to sit on the bottom. Keep that in mind when we're getting our wires prepped here. Line up your wire on the end so you know where to score to remove your rubber sheath here, okay. Move your end. Take your wire strippers, get your ends. Let's take note of our wire orientation here. We want green ground at the bottom, gold hot to the right, neutral to the left. So we actually need to kind of twist these around a little. There we go. Retwist our wire, give it a little hook. 
feedback in the channel. And I will kind of use my fingertip to hold the wire as I'm tightening down to make sure I get a good connection. Let's do the same for the black and white. Check your connections, great. Be mindful of your channel where your screw is going to go. Again, screw hole, two wires on one side and one wire on the other. Okay. Screw that in, and except for the wall plate, we're done. Now, on a lot of dimmers, uh, there's going to be a little slider on the side. So you'll see a plus and a minus sign on there. What that does is set your range of dimming. So by default, it should be right in the middle. It's gonna be kind of hard to see here, it's on the side. Um, for these quasars specifically, you'll wanna test this. You can hook it up, turn it on off. If the light kind of strobes and flashes, uh, that means that it's probably too low. So turn it off, raise up the slider to give it a little more juice, try it again. So for the quasars, I have found that just a slight tick up positive makes it a lot more stable as far as turning the light on without it flashing. Uh, so I've gone ahead and slid that up. And the only thing left to do now is to test it. Okay, I've got a two foot Quasar Science tube, crossfade. This right here, on is going to be to the right, off to the left, dimmer all the way down. Just plug it in. Okay, no sparks, good sign. We've got our dimmer built, We've got it plugged in. It is currently off at low power. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so you can see that it kind of strobed there, um, but it is working. We've got our dimmer built. Uh, we just need to put the faceplate on, but first we need to check that range I was talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it all the way down. Turn it on. Okay, you'll see that it just came right on. Tested it a couple times just to make sure your range is good. I'll show you what happens if your range is too low. So I slid that slider down more negative and you'll see that it blinked and didn't even turn on. If you turn the slider up, nothing. So let's turn it off. Slide that towards positive a little more and go ahead and turn it on. And there we go. Uh, it did not blink before turning on. Let's go ahead and slide it up, test it. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now the only thing left to do is to put our faceplate on. We've got another dimmer switch built. Okay, let's go ahead and do our faceplate. You see there's already screws on the inside here. This is the Lutron no visible screws faceplate. You just kind of pry it apart, pops off. You see your two screws. Back those screws out. Screws are out, take the faceplate, pop it on, line up the two screw holes. Faceplate is secured. Take the top, the top just snaps into these notches. And there you go, a completed LED friendly, no flicker compact dimmer. This is good up to about 600 watts on an incandescent or 150 total watts on LED or CFLs. So it's pretty straightforward, simple, uh, really lightweight, easy to stick around everywhere. And I hope you guys enjoyed this walkthrough. Thanks for watching and you guys have a good one.